Hello and welcome, this is Ruth and I'm back today with three die sets from Tonic Studios. Now these have obviously been out on the market for a little while and I had hoped to do a video quite a while ago and I'm just getting around to doing it now. So what actually happened was back in November my husband was in hospital for a little while and I took some time off to be with him and stay with him in hospital and then when he came home I took time off to look after him there as well. So I tried to prioritise the kind of videos that I was doing. These had come out and I thought, well, maybe you'll know how straightforward they are and you'll enjoy them without a video. But I think some of you have been having problems with them and have asked me, could I just show you how they go together? So this is quite a short video. I think anyway, I'm just starting. So I'm hoping it's short to show you how I would put these together. And hopefully uh, any of you who've been having difficulties will find that they're not just as difficult as you thought. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, we're back now and all's good. David's well again and everything's fine. Um, so I'll just get on with the video. But if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that and hit the notification bell. And if you enjoy it, share it, give it a big thumbs up and leave me a little comment down below. And then I'll know this has all been worth my while. Thank you. <laughs> right. So the three, the three die sets are then the Floral Layering Lace die set. This one is the hexagon layering lace die set and then this little one that goes in between the two of them is the layering lace box side panels die set. So these are basic layering die sets. They're huge, really big dies inside them and there are 17 in each of them. But then you can transform these layering lace die sets into boxes by using these little side panels. But I'll show you more of that in a moment, moment or two. First of all, we'll just have a quick look through these. Now I've already taken them off my the acetate and put them onto my big magnetic stand because that way I can leave this in my desk and I can lift these off and on and they're not going to get lost because they'll just click back onto there again. So as I said there are 17 dies in each and look at the size of them. Those are pretty huge so I'm just going to, maybe it actually says on here, uh, yeah the largest die cut is 1717 four millimeters by one nine seven millimeters which is six point nine inches by seven point eight inches that's the hexagon one so the floral layering lace one is uh, one nine seven millimeters by one nine seven which is seven point eight inches by seven point eight inches so those are big now i've already cut one of these out just to show you and i've made myself an eight by eight card obviously these are pretty straightforward to buy but if you don't want to buy one and you want to make one of your own just grab two A4 sheets of uh, white card or whatever colour you're going to use. So I usually cut one of them by 21 centimetres by 20 and then I cut the other one 20 by 20 centimetres and on the longer one I score in the extra centimetre here and just glue it on top and you've got a ready made card blank. It's as easy as that but you could obviously even just make a card with the die cut that you're going to get from that because it's very big as well. So I have used the outside die from this one. That cuts a solid shape. I'll set it on here. That would cut a solid shape. The next die here doesn't actually have cutting edges on the inside or the outside. So that cuts the pattern into your card. And if you use that one along with that one, you'll get this shape. <laughs> That's iridescent mirror card. It perfect petals, I think it's called, and it's really, really beautiful. Now I could go ahead, obviously, and use this one inside there, and cut the centre out of that, and then I'd have this floral frame, and I'd have a shape uh, this size as well. So you can do lots of that. There's lots and lots of these are uh, edge dies. So this one has the edge on the inside, and dots on the outside, and then the other way around on this one. This one here actually just makes the beautiful pattern inside so you could lay that on top there and you would get that pattern cut through that card but it doesn't take anything out and on it goes right through to the very smallest die here which is a circle and then you've got four different ones down at the bottom here and they say I'll have to have a look here smile for you and love you on that one and then we're doing exactly the same thing with this large die set and the smaller dies down here say dream hello and your day and then there's always sorry there as well in that one and this one has one in the center as well saying miss you 
So these can obviously mix and match because you can see here that I have got the uh, ones from this floral one. But you could go ahead and take these smaller ones here and use those in the centre of that. You can uh, sort of mix and match those, swap them out for the ones that are already in here. Now you don't even have to stick to having these floral ones in here because look at that. That looks beautiful on there as well. And obviously then you could start to layer on top of that. You could add some of these up on 3D foam pads or you could cut into them. You could do whatever you like, but you're going to get a lovely, great big layering set that has so many different options for you. There's the outside shape of this one. Isn't that gorgeous? So you could have that this way or you could have it this way, whichever way you like. And then you can add lots of these other little bits and pieces into the center of that. This one again is one that doesn't have outside cutting edges. So that will cut the pattern into the card. And I'm thinking already that you could use a lot of these for frames for big um, uh, scrapbook pages because Quite often scrapbook pages are normally 12 by 12 and those would make lovely great big frames for a lovely focal point. Say you had a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper and you wanted to mat a photo onto it and it was quite a big photo. You could just go ahead and cut that frame out there and put your photo in here or even layer it up on top and then go ahead and decorate the rest of the, of the scrapbook page. That would be really beautiful and you could add lots of these in for the layers and that as well. So I actually think this is fairly straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of cards with it. But what I want to show you, because I think that's what most of you have been asking for, is what this actually does. So this little set has 12 dies in it. And there they are. So these are the little panels. And as you can see, those will make little boxes. Now they don't make boxes with the big size of these. But if you go down to the smaller sizes here, you'll be able to cut out um, tops and bottoms for your boxes and then these will be the side panels but more about that soon I'll come right back to that one. I took that beautiful die that cut this lovely pattern out uh, and just ran this through the die cutting machine with that taped on top and a little tip with that sometimes in fact almost always with uh, whatever kind of tape you hold this down you will get marks when you run that through the die cutting machine this is the only tape that I've ever found that doesn't do that. This is the new Craft Perfect die tape. It's really, really fine and really, really just the, the right amount of tackiness to do that. And that came off perfectly, look, without even a mark. And you'll quite often get a rectangle or whatever on that um, whenever you cut it with other tape. Just a little tip and I hope that helps. So really all I've done is cut out lots and lots of layers and I just want to show you how they go together. So I've got this one, that's going to get glued on here. I'll add some 3D foam pads in behind just to show you the difference with that as well. Now I've missed out one and then I've gone for a white here. Uh, actually, I think I just went for the next layering white one. Uh, and then I did miss out the next one then. I gave this one a little skip and went for this one. And this one, as you can see, has a little scalloped cutting edge around the outside. And I cut a little mat in that and that's going to go right on there. Then I took this one which cuts out this shape just as it is and that's going to go on there. So I'm trying to show you the difference and some ways that this can be used that you're going to see some white, you're going to see some self color onto self color um, and generally just layering all of this up. Then I have taken this little die here. So this is actually two together and it says, um, where is it? Love you. It's this one. So I've taken this little scalloped edge one it looks as if it's scalloped, but that's actually just the die. The cutting edge is a plain circle. And then I've put this inside plain circle with a little dotted uh, pattern and it says love you. And that's what it looks like there. And I'm going to layer that up on top of that. And that makes a very, very simple and easy card. But don't forget that you don't have to have a card this size just because the layering die is that size. You've got lots and lots of options. So I'm thinking that you could go for a 5x5 five five card or even a 5x7 card and use just these ones. You don't have to, you know, have the whole thing covered in the die set. So I'm going to go ahead now and glue this one on first of all and then add some of these on top of that with 3D foam pads and some glue.
layered all of that up together and it looks really really beautiful uh, you can see the dimension there I think with 3d foam pads and then I've just taken a couple of flower dies from a different die set and added some up here and some down here you don't even have to do that because the, the die set is so pretty on its own so don't forget you definitely can use that to make smaller cards but I just wanted to show you the versatility of lots of those dies by making a bigger one so now I'm moving on to the uh, hexagon one and you can see here even on the packaging that you can make apertures with these and make all sorts of different cards with them but again I'm just going to make a big layering one and then I'll show you how to make the actual card base with it first of all and then we'll layer it all up and then I'll just get straight into making the boxes. So I have cut two of these dies, two of these shapes out rather and obviously the card shape you'll want to stand it on the flat part because it'll have an awful job balancing just on this tiny tip if you were to go this way. So I have cut two of those out and you can see here that I have just scored from point to point right across the top here and that way then I can glue this to the back of this and this will open up and make a card blank and I could have done exactly the same here I could have scored let me see I've covered most of these up but from this point to the one across here and use that to do the same thing so uh, I'm putting what I call the good side to the outside there and then this is the inside here and that is just a, another way of making the card but obviously you could make a smaller one this, this uh, same shape while that glue's just grabbing there make sure that all these other little pieces are all in the right place and then you sort of will make sure that it's uh, going to stand right at the end and there you are now I have cut out the same uh, shape again so I've used this one for the, the background of this and then I've cut this beautiful big pattern into the middle of it and then I have gone for the lovely little um, well, I'll just show you again this one and I have run that through there and you can do that all together or you can uh, just wait and do one at a time uh, just whichever way you're most confident with because the last thing you want to do is run uh, one over the other in the die cutting machine if they're not really really well secured now this time I have picked out let me see these two packs of cards these are both satin effect and I've got purple mist and soft amethyst I'm sure I've showed you this before but this is the, just the way I keep my card so all the off cuts will be in the back of the pack and when I lift a pack out I automatically flip it over and see if I can fit any of my dies onto this, the smaller off cuts first and before I would uh, sort of cut another big page and that's just the way I store them and that way I don't really waste too much card in fact I waste, waste very very little of anything but there you are now I'm going to dye that <laughs> going to glue that on top just like so and then this time really just because this is such a very very bold color I wanted to add some uh, plain into it so some some white and I have die cut a, a white hexagon and that was just with this plain white hexagonal die it's not any of the ones with the fancy edges or anything on them and then I took the soft amethyst and look it's not really gorgeous there let me just show you the die I used for that that's this one that is really really beautiful and when I put that on there you'll see the white in between and I think that purple really needs that you might just absolutely love that purple I do but I think it just needs a little bit of something to, to soften it down a little bit and then I've taken the next one down again like this and I'm going to pop that on there I did that in white isn't that so beautiful and then this one in the purple again and that's going on there so I used that one which has the lovely little scallop around it and then I used hello in the inside so I've used those and the amethyst and I've used this one on the white and I'm going to layer all of those up because I think that just doesn't show off clearly enough when you put it on another color you need to do them either uh, the color on the white or as I've done this one the white on top of the color so now I'm going to have fun, I'm going to just glue all this together.
two cards made and I'm going to show you how to make a box and you'll need these dies to adapt the layering dies into little boxes. So you can have a little look first at this die set and we've had the outside edge hopefully you'll be able to, yeah you can see all of that. So we've got the outside edge and then the big one that made the pattern and then if you come to the next two dies and just lift those out we'll have a little look and you can see same thing on here but this is the one that seems to be causing a little bit of um, concern. <laughs> so these two dies look very very similar obviously one smaller than the other that's why they fit in to each other like that and there's little dots on them. The cutting edge on the outside one is right inside at the centre of it here at the inside and then on this one the cutting edge is at the outside so that means there's very very little difference in size between those two dies and the way we'll tell them apart is because the uh, dots are on the outside and the dots are on the inside as well as the size of them but the one that's slightly bigger is going to be the lid of the box and the one that's slightly smaller is going to be the box itself obviously the lid just needs to be that little bit bigger so that it fits over the top of the box and that's the reason you have the two dies so close in size so that being said we'll go back to this set again and you can see here there's decorative panels in there but the two main dies for making this are this one here and it's in two it cuts out two pieces actually there it is and then we've got this one which does the same thing only in a bigger size and this is the box sides and this is the lid sides it's really really easy but you'll need to cut out three of each of those because obviously you'll see there that there are six of these pieces six here six scallops and that means you need six of these pieces to go around them so first of all what I'm going to do is um, explain very very quickly what these little scallops are for so as in any box whenever we're going around a curve you don't have straight pieces along the bottom the glue tabs are actually little scallops so these ones will fit onto the base of the box these ones then form a little lip at the top and if you don't want to use the, the top ones now is the time just to chop those off and you'll just have a normal box like any other box you've ever made and you don't necessarily need those however I'm going to show you how to make them make the boxes with this little lip part at the top and it just stabilizes the box nicely and gives another little feature to it Anyhow, at this stage then, you will need to cut out two of the bigger ones, two of the smaller ones, and then we can leave all the decoration and all the rest of it to the end, but make sure you have those ready, and three of these, and three of these. Now first of all, I'm going to just shape these a little bit with my bone folder, and I need to do that on them all, because there is a curve involved, as you can see, uh, going around these little edges here. I've got my four pieces up here there are two and two and these pieces then will have to go fit in around those curves so you just want to make sure you've got the uh, card shaped a little bit it's actually probably better to do it with something round like I normally do but uh, it'll not matter just too much at the moment then go ahead and fold all of the glue tabs over top and bottom and also burnish these really really well And you do that for all of these and all of these. You'll see I've used the uh, Craft Perfect texture weave card this time. I always use Craft Perfect card but sometimes it's the 300 GSM smooth card, sometimes it's the mirror card or whatever but this is the texture weave card. It's 200 GSM, 216 GSM and the reason I've done that is just because it makes this slightly easier to mould around the sides. I'm quite sure I could still do that with 300 but I'm doing it with 216 and then I have got some paper to put on the top of here and that will strengthen that and it'll still be quite a, a strong little box. But have a little look back here and, and make sure you've identified the right pieces for the top and the bottom, the top and the lid. So you'll know that the plain one here is the bigger one and that's the one you want for the lid. And then these two with the little dotted line on it 
are the pieces that you'll need for the actual box because they're slightly smaller. So first of all we're going to take these three pieces and glue them together by this little glue tab on each of them and make a big long line of these. I've got all of that piece ready now and all I'm going to do is put some glue around here so each little curve uh, the points of the curves go into the points of this so I am just going to pop that in there and that in there and you'll see I like to put it down on the table like that and hopefully you can catch this on camera I think you can I'll lift it up in a moment or two once the glue has grabbed a little but I'm really just going in from point to point and then I just press it down on the table and make sure that everything's right into that point. Let that one grab and then you can move on to the next one and it's as easy as that and you just follow it the whole way around. the first one on it's easier I think anyway just to add, pull that back slightly and add the glue to the little tabs and follow it right on round in exactly the same way just remember to keep pointing this part right in and make sure that the little point is right into the center there and there you have it yet again hopefully you can see it better this time Press that down for a time or two right around to the little point again in there and right down in there and make sure that's really tight and then you can follow on to the next one. That's all the pieces in place and now you can just turn this over and all of these exposed glue tabs can get covered by the second piece that you cut because that fits perfectly right over the top of that. So you just glue that one down now. As I said at the start of the video, if you don't want this little rim bit, bit here, you could have cut that off at the start or if you want to just leave it to strengthen it, you can just go ahead and pop glue in behind there and fold all of those back. But the idea behind the little lip on it is that you're going to cut out this piece here and then that holds the box sides and everything all in perfect place for the lid to go on because those tend to want to spring back out slightly. So you'll take the same die that you used to cut the actual box size and then the one that is just slightly smaller than that. Now there is a little uh, decorative piece that fits in between those on the die set so you'll see it there but you don't need to cut the middle one out but if you just place that in and get the placement of that obviously uh, facing with the, the die side down and attach both of those together with some double sided sorry with some masking tape or some dye tape and uh, that means that when you cut that out you'll be able to cut it out twice because you just peel it off and it'll still be attached together by the dye tape and that gives you this shape and that means now that you're going to have two of those and I like to fold all of these back again just for the moment because one of these fits in below those tabs and the other one then fits on top so what I do again is just start in here and it's easier if you put the glue I think here but maybe we'll go ahead and add it to the other bit afterwards but I just put some glue in there 
and start off with one of these pieces here. So again, identify where the little point is on both sides there and just go in there right into the point. In fact, actually, we'll maybe just put some glue on over that point on both of those and that will hold it perfectly in place. And you can see there where the, your little point is and pop that in. So this is another one of those little jobs that I find pegs are really, really handy for because when you pop that piece in there and hold it and just make sure you've got the point in the right place here, pop a peg on top of the glue tab, hold it in place and then go right round here to this one and you can do the same thing there. Just make sure you put your thumbnail in there and hold that and a little peg on there. Popping that back in again. And there you are. And then you can just pop those little pieces down with your finger and your thumb together there. And that way this won't move and you can go ahead and I normally instead of working the whole way around that I would go to the one opposite and do exactly the same thing. Once you've got those first two in place, that actually stabilises a lot more and it's it's much simpler even just to go around the rest of them after that. So again, if it suits you better, you can just go ahead and put the glue on the tabs. Or if, like me, you prefer to put it on here, it doesn't matter if you get any extra glue on there because it's going to get covered up in a minute or two anyway. Now you'll be able to do exactly the same thing as you did with the bottom of the box, except now you're going to do it with this piece and it covers all of those glue tabs up. So just make sure you put plenty of glue on right out to the edges and into those little points as well, the whole way around. And then you'll be able to glue that on and that's the bones of the box made. And you can decorate that whatever way you like after that. You could pop a piece of patterned paper or something inside, which I actually might do because I've picked some of the gorgeous mulberry wine paper, the 12 by 12 pad from Tonic, and uh, I've used that for the side panels that I've cut. So I will probably put a piece of that down inside there as well. I'm going to make the lid up in exactly the same way. So I've taken that bigger piece and I've taken the shorter sides and I have gone ahead and just put one curved part right into the point here and glued it in exactly the same way as I did before. And you can bend this back uh, like that and add the glue in here. So it's just really one little rounded area, one little scallop at a time. Pop that right around like that and right into the point again and hold. You can press it down with your finger on the inside there. It's really, really handy if you keep it on the desk like that or on your glass mat or whatever you work on. But actually, I prefer to work on a glass mat because um, obviously you just scrape the glue off afterwards. That causes a bit of a problem on here and I haven't got my other little mat out, but um, anyway. It reflects in whenever I'm filming, so I, I tend not to use that one just so much. I should have my other little messy mat out. Anyway, I can give it a good old wipe afterwards. So you're really just going to carry on the same way as we did for the top part, the actual box itself, right round. But it's really important just to hold the points in place. Whoops. Just to hold the points in place, as I said. Um, get those adhered first. And then just help that one down a little bit with your finger. 
Then you can go right ahead and do exactly the same thing as we did with the base of the box. You'll take the second piece that you cut and glue that on top of, right off top of there and that then will cover all those little glue tabs. And now you can go ahead and decorate. I've cut out some layers, so I've, as I said, I picked some of this beautiful mulberry wine paper and I've got some of the layers from the set as well there. And then you can see, look, isn't that really gorgeous? That it just sort of centered on one of those flowers. So I'm gonna do that. And then I've taken these little small layers that came inside of the die, this uh, die set. I'll show you this again. So I have used these ones and I've cut those all out of here. And I have used these ones and I've cut those out for the side panels of the box. But I'm going to give them all just a slight little curve before I glue them on, the large ones and the small ones. And uh, I'll be right back when I've done all that and got them all on. I did go ahead and put some pattern paper down inside there and that looks really lovely and then I've decorated the edges and there's my little lid. Now there's little catches to go on the lid if you want you can add them on here. I haven't added them because I think the lid fits really nicely just the way it is but you can certainly go ahead and do that. Now I am going to uh, just make a little hexagonal box I think as well because this time I can make that with the 300 GSM card the way I like to. For the base and obviously um, I'm going to add some of the, the other panels onto it just to show you what that looks like as well because I don't want to just leave it unfinished like that and I want to show you everything that's in the set. I'm just going to show you which ones it is now before I actually do cut these out. So I'm going for the this die and this one and I lift both of those out and again you can see it here this is the outside die in the set the next one then is the the patterned one and it's the next two in from that and the one that's slightly bigger will be for the lid and the one that's slightly smaller will be for the box. So I'm going to cut two of each of those out and then some decorative panels for the top of that. And also I'm going to cut out three of these again and three of these again and I'll cut out some of these and I'll put the little lock on this time just to show you. For the hexagonal box then, I've cut out all of the sides and instead of just attaching them in one big long piece, I've actually joined them all together this time and I've cut out two of the smaller side uh, pieces and two of the larger pieces. The smaller ones, as I said before, are for the box and the larger ones are for the lid because it's got the fit down over that. And this is, to me, a, a very, very easy way of fitting this in this time. So you just put glue around the outside edge of that and pop it inside. Just make sure that these bottom ones are all, are all flat and if you pop that inside there and bring it right down on top of those there you have it and that holds those sides really really well in place as well and you can go ahead then and just with your little bone folder or your finger or whatever and pop those into place there and press the, the glue tabs down onto the glue now I would leave that just for a little minute or two to make sure those have all grabbed and then you can go ahead with the, the same piece that you've already cut out with the little uh, dots on it as well because you'll know that's exactly the same size. Turn this over and you have the other piece there that you can just put directly on top and again that covers all those little glue tabs.
I've gone ahead then and lined the inside of it with a beautiful piece of card in there in raspberry pink and then I have cut panels for around the outside and I've glued those on as well. So I've cut this one in raspberry pink and then this one and this one together in white card and I have just glued the white card on top and glued them all around there. And then I've got all these panels ready to do the same thing with as I've uh, made for the inside part of the little flower shape box. So you can see here, this is the, the piece that's exactly the same size as the base of the box and the little die that is the cutting edge one that's um, one size smaller. So there is actually a pattern die that fits in between the two. You can use it for placement if you want and you'll need to cut that out twice. But I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did for the other little flower shape box. I'm going to just glue this in here. It's a lot easier this time because the sides are straight so um, you probably don't even need to watch along but I'm going to have it on here anyway. I'm going to glue this in here, glue that over the top and then I'll go straight over here, do the same thing on the opposite side and then I'll come back here, just go back and forwards across that. That keeps it all nice and straight, keeps this really really straight. When I've got all of that glued together then I'm just going to glue this one on top and that will cover all those little glue tabs. joined all the little side panels together and I've burnished all these back as well and now I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did with the box. These are the two bigger uh, die shapes that I cut and I'm going to just put glue around the outside edge here and pop this into the centre and then I'm going to cover the glue tabs with the other one. And after that then I'll add some layering dies on top and decorate it all. But it's very very easy just to pop that in like that and then it, it makes sure you've got it um, right down in and it holds its shape really really well and you can press those pieces right down with your finger and all the glue should grab. It'll just take a minute or two. layered up some dies on top of that. It's really really nice and then I've just mixed and matched them a bit really just because I could. Um, so some from one set and some is from the other and I quite like the look of that like that with the little flower on top and then I cut this one and I'm looking and I'm wondering would I like it like that so I'm just going to make my mind up here. Mm, I prefer the cleaner cut look. There we are that was a quick decision. <laughs> But that means that I've got another little doily that I can use for something else. I can keep that for something else. And there you have it. Another lovely little box. Now I'm looking at this box and I think it would actually look very nice. Obviously not on that colour, but you could make a base for it as well. Um, in the same colour, of course. <laughs> that was just by the by. 
Now I have finished, that's all I'm going to make with those, so I'll just give you a very, very quick run through again what I've done. And uh, that's the first card there. So that's an 8x8 eight eight with the, the dies layered on top. And then this is an actual card made from the shape itself. But don't forget, you could use that maybe even with patterned paper or something in behind it. Or if you find that that's enough and you don't need any more pattern on it, that would be lovely on top of the card as well. So you have both options there. And obviously you have other options as well because you can make the card a lot smaller. It doesn't have to be with all of those dies in. And then we've made this beautiful little floral shape box. Now I've added some of the, uh, I think it's pink petals paper back on there. This lovely shiny uh, card, it is actually, it's iridescent mirror card. I have it in there too. I really, really love it. And I think it just gives that paper a little lift. Quite often I use that mulberry wine paper with white card. And this time, because I've used it with the lilac or the soft amethyst and whatever, um, I thought it needed just that little bit of shine to give it another little kick of life. So we've got that. And then I've got this. That is so gorgeous. Those dyes are really beautiful. It, that the pattern runs the whole way around. But I just wanted to show you that you could do either. Either or. And obviously then the inside part here, that one's lined. And on this one, I have this lined as well. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that, uh, it, although it's a little late, I hope it's still of some use to you. And I was glad of your company. So thank you very, very much. My affiliate links to this will be down below. But I do appreciate everybody. And thank you very, very much to everyone who bought those before I have actually made these and used my links. I know some of you did that and I really appreciate that. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, I would really love you to do that and hit the notification bell. And that way you'll be kept up to date whenever any more videos come along. And thank you very, very much. If you have enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and leave me a little comment down below and let me know what you think of it. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye bye.